Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be tearing into this R1150RT. This procedure is going to be the exact same for the R1100RT, as well as other, it could be translated over into like pretty much any R1150 or R1100 model. So the customer complaint is the bike just kind of lost power. Um, so what I think happened is the transmission splines slipped out on the clutch and, uh, I don't know if both splines are damaged, but I think, uh, we're going to end up taking a good look at those transmission splines and then end up, uh, replacing the clutch here. So kind of how I got, uh, why I'm suspecting a transmission or clutch spline, I'll show you right here. The bike's in first gear. And when I turn the wheel, which I shouldn't even be able to turn with one hand while it's in gear, you can hear the splines slipping on each other. So that's in first gear there. And I'm just turning that easily by hand. So I'm going to speed through all the boring stuff here. But uh, step one is going to be getting the seat off, front and rear seat, as well as removing all the body panels. Do you spend more time looking for that 10 millimeter socket than you do actually using it? Are your tools constantly being lost, misplaced, or getting rearranged each time your drawers slam? No more searching, buying duplicate tools, everything has a spot. Trace My Space offers fully customizable drawer inserts, 100% tailored for your box and your tools. Spend more time using your tools and stay organized. Head on over to tracemyspace.com and I will link that below in the description. Now we are going to take our intake pipe and uh, radio or storage cubby off. So it's just a three mil Allen, four mil, four mil, and then a little thumb screw inside of here. Now we are going to take our gas tank off. So just a six millimeter Allen right here. And then there's a, I believe it's a 13 millimeter nut on the backside, but sometimes you can just hold the nut with your finger. Then we got our fuel pump connection right here. And our fuel line. And then we should be able to just pull our gas tank up and just slide it on out of here. We'll get our battery out of here. Pull our air box cover, unplug our intake air temperature sensor. Let's kind of put that off to the side. Phillips screwdriver. Now's a good time to inspect your air filter and replace it if you need to. So now we're gonna get our throttle bodies um, out of here. So we're gonna unplug our throttle position sensor here, unplug our injector, and then uh, two four millimeter Allens holding the fuel rail and injector onto the throttle body. Then we can remove our injector from our throttle body. And let's just, uh, what I like to do is just put all the screws right back where I got them from. So when we put this all back together, there's no questioning what bolt went where and uh, it just makes it a little easier. We can actually leave our throttle cables on just because uh, what we're gonna end up doing is just kinda resting the throttle bodies over the cylinders. We got two just flathead hose clamps under here. I like to just loosen these up all the way. Unplug our vacuum connection at the bottom of the throttle body here. There's gonna be a zip tie under there to cut. And then with a four millimeter again, uh, there's a little ground wire on the bottom of here. 
fuel rail injectors off, um, throttle position sensors unplugged, the vacuum line's undone, and the ground wire is undone. Um, all these hose clamps are loosened, so it might require a little bit of might, but we're gonna push this tube into this air box and then get the uh, throttle body off of here. So our throttle body right here, the fuel rail here, you be very careful with this, the rail, the fuel line on the fuel rail, very fragile. Um, you can just let it hang there. Throttle cable can stay attached to the throttle body and we're just gonna kind of rest these up here out of the way. So we're gonna go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. We're gonna have to remove our rear brake caliper with a T45 Torx. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, take the rear wheel off. So since our transmission splines are probably damaged, we can't really hold the rear wheel to loosen it. So if you can, you either have a buddy hold down on the rear brake, or if you've got one at home, just an impact. With the T25 Torx, we'll take our rear speed sensor out. So now we're gonna pull our left foot bracket off. So in order to do that, it's a six mil Allen, six mil Allen, eight mil Allen, eight mil Allen, and then there's another six mil Allen on the back side here. Then we have on the back side here where our shifter connects to the transmission. There's a little clip that we'll get off here. Put it back through here just so we don't lose it. So it goes through there, through that hole, and then just clips around. Getting the right foot rest off is a little bit uh, trickier, but uh, same concept. We got a four millimeter Allen here. Behind that, we have an eight millimeter Allen. And then we have a six mil here, six mil here. This one here can stay and our brake lever will stay attached to the foot plate. And then we have two five millimeter Allens here holding on your rear uh, master cylinder. And then there's 10 millimeter nuts on the back side of here. And then right here is an eight millimeter Allen that doesn't have anything on the back side. It's just threaded into the frame. And then you have a six millimeter Allen up here that should have a 13 millimeter nut on the back side. And then on the back side of the right foot plate, you have your uh, brake light switch. So that's just held on with a uh, four millimeter Allen. Now we are going to remove our exhaust system just from the catalytic converter back. So what we're gonna use is a 15 millimeter wrench, undo this hose clamp here, and then you can just take your O2 sensor wire, kind of follow that up, and uh, your O2 sensor plug is right here. So it should be held on with a couple zip ties. Um, we're just gonna clamp those off, undo your uh, plug here, just like that. Pull your sensor wire out, your 15 millimeter wrench under here, and then on the back side of the uh, muffler here, there's a T50 Torx. So now we are gonna go ahead and take our rear drive off. Next thing we're gonna do is get our swing arm out of here. So same procedure as the rear drive with the big 30, mill 30 millimeter nut we're gonna loosen first, uh, 12 millimeter Allen. The rear shock there is an eight millimeter Allen. You'll have to loosen up that. This little loop here has a 10 millimeter nut on the back side, and it's that same uh, 12 millimeter Allen over here. Loosen this up a little bit. We're gonna loosen up this rear shock mount here. Actually, this we can just totally remove. It's an eight mil. With a 10 millimeter wrench, 
We're gonna undo this bolt up here. Loosen up this with a 12 millimeter Allen. And then we got our swing arm out of there. Then we're gonna get our drive shaft out of here. So to get your drive shaft out of here, you're just gonna use like a little pry bar, put it in here, get it just right behind that drive shaft. And it should just pop right out very easily. You should never have to force that. See how easy that came out of there? Next, we're gonna take off our little uh, seat, seat bracket here. It's just a four millimeter Allen and it's four screws. So now we're gonna get our rear shock out of here. Um, we're gonna be using a 14 millimeter wrench and a 15 millimeter socket. So the nut is a 15 mil and then the bolt head is a 14 mil. Now we're gonna focus on getting the starter out of here. So to get the starter out, we're just gonna need a six millimeter Allen. There's a bolt here and a bolt kind of tucked under it behind it. And then also these electrical connections, um, this right here just uh, pulls right off like that. And then this, just this top wire needs to be removed and that's just a 13 millimeter. So wiggle it back and forth, pull it right out. Now we're gonna loosen up our air box. So there's a five millimeter Allen uh, under here. Might be hard to see on the camera, but right there, if you can see into there. So we'll loosen up that. Then there's also um, another bolt. You can see that right there inside the air box. So we'll loosen up that one as well. So now kind of our main objective is to uh, get rid of anything that's uh, gonna interfere with the uh, subframe. So I can remove the whole brake system um, just by unplugging that and undoing the uh, master cylinder. You will not be able to do that if you have an ABS model. And what we're gonna do is kind of work around the bike. Um, anything that's gonna interfere with this swing arm, or sorry, the subframe swinging up. So if that makes sense, what we're gonna do is uh, loosen up, these. this bolt here is already loose. We're gonna loosen up these in here and then um, use a ratchet strap from this rack back here or uh, the seat post here and go to the handlebars. And then we're just gonna very uh, kind of gently swing this whole subframe up. So what we're doing is just going around, making sure there's Nothing that's gonna interfere when we swing this up. We don't wanna pull on any wires. So our air box is loose and we're gonna pull the subframe off of the air box. Your fuel rail, you gotta be careful of that. Um, any hoses, cables, anything that's zip tied along the subframe here should be removed, making sure you're not gonna pull a wire up with the subframe. So like I said, just working around, you know, this plug here, needs to be unplugged. This wire here, zip tied along the uh, subframe here. These zip ties need to be cut. Um, you can label your plugs, all your connections, so you know where they all go later. But we're gonna get rid of all these zip ties here. Make sure all these wires are out of the way. It's gonna be pivoting right here on this uh, eight millimeter Allen right there. We're gonna to have to loosen up this top or remove this top um, nut right there. Make sure nothing's binding anything. If you look under here on the uh, transmission, we have the uh, gear indicator wire right here. So on the back side of the transmission, we have our uh, gear indicator right here so uh if you just want it has little two little metal things that you pinch on and then you just pull it straight out so in here doing this one-handed but you pull on these little metal uh pins and then you should be able to just grab this whole gear indicator and slide it out like that 
So got that out. And then you'll have to uh, follow this wire up here. Unplug this connection right here for the gear indicator. You know, kind of pull this, follow it back around. There's also two 10 millimeter nuts um, underneath the battery here. So take these two nuts and just loosen them all the way up. So um, we've gone through and uh, any wire, anything that's zip tied along the frame. So when we swing, flip this uh, subframe up, anything that's gonna interfere has been taken care of. And then when we end up uh, doing that right here, um, we're gonna pay very close attention to anything to make sure we're not tugging on anything. And it all, this whole subframe should just swing up very freely. So there's a 16 millimeter nut um, holding the subframe together. And uh, we just need to loosen that up here. So this right here doesn't need to be totally removed, but just uh, loosened up there. And then we're going to use a eight millimeter and remove this bottom uh, Allen here. <clears throat> eight millimeter Allen, this bolt's getting removed. And then this nut up here um, should already be loose because that, that's a through bolt. So now that we have uh, both those uh, eight millimeter Allens out, you can see that with minimal effort, I'm just pushing with my left arm, I can uh, pretty s swing this uh, subframe up pretty easily. So what we're gonna do is kind of hold our battery box down, keeping it in place, and then swing the uh, subframe over the battery box. And then I'm just gonna use a uh, ratchet strap or whatever, and just, uh, or even maybe this bungee cord, and just secure the subframe up so it's just held in place above the bike. So now that we have our air box and fuel rail out, um, we should be able to kind of look around the whole transmission and see every single bolt that we need to undo. Um, we'll need to undo the uh, clutch slave cylinder. That's held in with um, three five millimeter bolts on the back side here, um, five millimeter Allen bolts. So these bolts here are uh, in there pretty good and they don't really want to come out. So I'm not even gonna try to get them out just because I don't wanna cause damage to them. Um, that'd be the preferred method to get this slave cylinder out. But um, if those bolts are hard to get out, uh, they're pretty fragile. You can use a four millimeter Allen and then just uh, take the, the bleeder screw off the top here. Not the bleeder screw, but the banjo bolt. So we're just gonna take this out. It will leak brake fluid. We're gonna bleed our clutch anyway. Um, then I'm just going to put the line in this bag with a towel in it to soak up any brake fluid that might leak and then just throw a zip tie around the top of the line. So these come out really easily. Um, the only downside is when you do this, you will have to uh, bleed the clutch, which isn't that big of a deal because it's good practice to do that anyway. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Uh, six millimeter bolts around the transmission there. Um, so we're gonna loosen up all those. I like to use just a, uh, a long six millimeter Allen on a three eighths uh, ratchet and just work your way around. So just loosen all up. So we removed our transmission here and I'll uh, show you what's going on. So we got our transmission out. This is the push rod I was talking about earlier. Um, that's fine to just stay right there for now. Um, but on the uh, transmission splines, you can see they're just totally gone. So you can see how worn all these splines are. And then in the tr clutch here, you can see the splines there are uh, Pretty much toast. So now on the pressure plate here, there's all of these, uh, I believe they're five millimeter Allen bolts. 
and then we'll pull our, this is our spring here. And then your pressure plate is two pieces and the clutch goes in between. So then what I like to do is uh, assemble this all kind of on the bench. So our spring here is a uh, concave. Um, so just like we took it apart, we're gonna put the spring down with the high side of the spring facing up. This piece here goes like that. It doesn't really lock in. It just kind of floats on the spring there. Sorry, floats on the spring. You can see that there's like these pads kind of on the pressure plate there. So that goes like that. New clutch, that gets put down like that, facing upward. And there's also these pins you can see right, um, right here. These pins, which align into these holes. So line that pin up. Line all three of them up, it should kind of fall together. And then we have our clutch alignment tool that we're gonna kind of just skewer through all this stuff. So now we have it all, all together and um, all of our little pins are through our pressure plate there. So it's all together just how it should be. So the two threaded holes here and here are gonna line up here and here. And then the little alignment is gonna go on this. And that's the same for all three of these. So. That gets put on like that. And then our, this right here kind of simulates our push rod. And then I put a little bit of grease in there for our push rod. That's a special grease. I'm gonna link that below. And this is the same diameter as our clutch. So this is kind of simulating the transmission. If you don't use this tool, you'll never get your transmission to line up properly. And then we're gonna go around and uh, torque all these bolts. And we can just leave this in there for now until we're ready to put our transmission in. Now that we have all these uh, bolts torqued up, our clutch alignment tool should literally just fall in there, spin around easily. There's no binding, no resistance, nothing. Everything's straight. And then we're gonna wanna lubricate our splines in here. So this is a special, uh, a special spline lube. So we have our new transmission here. So this transmission is in a little bit better condition. As you can see, all the splines here are nice, healthy, intact. So now we are ready to install our transmission. So when installing your transmission, it's uh, helpful to have you on one side of the bike and then a friend or some, someone else that can help you out on the other side of the bike. So um, on the transmission, there's four shorter bolts and uh, two slightly longer bolts. The two slightly longer bolts are gonna go on the bottom of the transmission on these two holes. And then the other four um, slightly shorter bolts are gonna go around the perimeter on top. We'll just grab our transmission, go up, line our push rod and feel it drop right in and then on the back of your transmission in here, spin this until you feel your, um, feel your splines engage. There you go. Then get that dowel lined up. Kind of wiggle it back and forth. So now that our transmission has dropped into place here, and I kind of got all these bolts just finger tight around there, um, what I'm gonna do is just work around it with a ratchet and uh, snug them up and then we'll torque them. So now that we have our transmission all installed, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we can hook up our slave cylinder. Four millimeter Allen there, just to get that um, snugged up and we don't need to reef this down. Now we can get our air box and fuel rail installed. There's a breather hose right here that connects there. And then our fuel rail, we have to put that in first, is gonna kind of lay in these uh, channels here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, seat these injectors down into the uh, throttle bodies here. Now that we have our uh, injectors installed, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up the throttle body onto the cylinder head. We can now lower our subframe here back down. So uh, um, obviously this bolt here 
or this hole in the frame is going to have to uh, align down to here um, as well as this right here when you pivot it it's going to go up to that hole there on the engine and then we're going to have to pay attention to this hole here on the air box and uh, this tab here on the frame and if you can see in there that stud right there is going to be going through um, right there and there on the battery box right here this hole on the air box is going to go right there we're going to start by uh, just tightening up these uh, frame bolts here and this lines up well enough that we don't even need a ratchet or anything we just uh, can get that started by hand there so we don't need to get this tight yet and like i talked about a second ago these little uh studs are going to line right up so i'm just going to slip that washer on there and then um get these 10 millimeter nuts started onto the battery box we can now get our three air box bolts started and tightened up We can now go ahead and put our gear position indicator um, on. So this has like kind of a, it's kind of has like a D shape inside of there. So we're gonna have to line that up with the D shape on there. And then our wire here can be fished through this Kind of this hole on the back side of the transmission and on the side of the transmission once it gets fished through this hole here there's this little metal tab there in a little fin on the transmission this little metal tab engages onto there and plugged in to this plug right here we can now get our uh might as well get all of our wires over here plugged in so this four pronger Plugged in onto the throttle potentiometer, this little two prong there, gets slipped over the injector. Um, this wire here is for the ground. If you remember, there's a little ground screw on the bottom of the throttle body. So that's gonna get slipped through there and you'll tighten that up. And then we'll get our starter put on and then the uh, big eyelet goes over right there and then the other wire gets slipped over this little spade terminal right there. And then there's the side stand switch wire here that goes from the side stand and that's going to get routed behind the starter here and it's easier to do with this when the starter is uh, installed so you'd have, you don't really have to worry about pinching the wires and it's going to kind of Go up behind the starter, along the frame here, and then plug in right here. We can now slide our intake boots out of our air box here, make sure both these hose clamps are loose, and then slide it over our throttle body. So when you slide it over your throttle body, you wanna make sure that you don't roll this O-ring over. You wanna make sure this O-ring stays um, seated in the groove here on the throttle body. And then uh, sometimes it helps just to have a little bit of a little bit of lubricant on that O-ring. And then we'll do the same thing here on the other side. Um, as far as the plug, there's only one plug on this side, just the uh, injector there. We are now going to reinstall our drive shaft. So what you're going to do is you're going to smear that same grease that we put on the clutch splines in the uh, drive shaft splines. Then we're just going to slip this over the splines there. It should just fall right in. And then just take a rubber mallet and on the back side, we're just going to give it a, a light tap and you'll feel it just seat right down in. So right there, now it's locked in there. And then the next step we're going to do is slide our swing arm over the drive shaft, just like that. So now 
with a 12 millimeter Allen. We're gonna, with one hand, again, this might help to have a buddy. We're gonna line up that um, bearing in the swing arm with this right here. And then this uh, peg on the bolt here is gonna go through that bearing. And then we're gonna to wanna to get these threads started by hand. Exact same thing over here. So I have this bolt, slide my uh, 12 mil over there, line up that bearing, just like that. We will now put our rear shock, our rear shock into place. So what we're gonna do is just, uh, from the bottom, we're gonna slide our rear shock up through here. Kinda fish it, we're gonna line it up right through there. There we go. Slide our bolt through there. And then we'll just, uh, for now, lightly thread our nut on. Go to the lower shock mount here. Just kind of tuck our Preload adjuster out of the way, lift up on our swing arm, kind of line up our shock there, and then uh, slide this bolt right through. And then we can get our uh, preload adjuster here. And now that we have all three of these light loosely put on, we can go around and tighten them all up. We are now gonna go ahead and install our uh, left foot plate. So the first thing we're gonna do is, there's this thing, if you remember from the shifter, so that is just a little like, kind of like a ball joint, and that just snaps over the uh, shift shaft there. I'm going to use both hands to kinda snap it over like that and then there's this clip which if you remember goes through the hole and then kind of wraps around the ball joint um engaging it in there so slides right up and then just kind of wraps around and snaps into place there we're going to grab one of these six millimeter bolts throw it through the foot plate get it started right there in the um transmission Now that those two are started, we're going to get this one started. In order to get this one started, what I'm going to do is just throw a socket on the end of that. It's an 8 mil pickup on the back of the subframe until it falls through the frame. And then I'm just going to finger tighten that into the uh, transmission there. Get this 8 mil right here. It's 8 mil head started through the frame there. And then we're going to tighten up those two sixes and these two eights, and then we'll get going on the right side. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the right side here. Um, the only difference is we have the brake master cylinder to worry about, but it's pretty much the same. We have the two six millimeter bolts here, the one eight millimeter bolt here, that we're gonna have to kind of lift up on the back of the subframe to get started. And in the back here, we have a uh, eight millimeter bolt here, and then uh, just a six millimeter bolt here. So now getting started here on this rear master cylinder, it can get a little tricky trying to kind of balance everything, but this is a little bit easier than what you guys might have at home due to the fact that this guy's ABS has been removed but it's gonna be similar procedure here. The, uh, this is the rear master cylinder and there's the brake pedal that you push down to stop. So that just kind of slips up into here. And then the master cylinder is gonna align with those two, uh, those two little bolts here with a five millimeter Allen head and then a 10 millimeter nut on the backside. So we're gonna shove one of those through and then just uh, doing this one-handed here. So thread that 
nut onto the back side there. Just get that like that, it's fine for now. Um, this is for your uh, wheel speed sensor. It's gonna plug up by your reservoir. Hang our caliper over the swing arm, just like that. Snap our uh, reservoir here. Actually, before we even do that, we need to get make sure our uh, brake switch here. Sorry, I'm kind of get ahead, getting ahead of you guys. There's a little fin similar to the one we had on the transmission from earlier. That'll kind of just, a little clip slips right onto there. This is a four mil, four millimeter Allen right here. Loosen that up, pull your brake lever back, slip your uh, brake light switch into the, uh, loosen up this, under that nut there, and then um, get that four millimeter head Allen. Let's get it started there. Snap this wire back into place. Tighten up this four mil Allen, and then these two five millimeter head bolts with the 10 mil on the back. We'll get our reservoir hung there. Make sure our clutch bleeder is routed correctly up and out of the way. Just kind of keep our caliper, it's kind of hanging it over the uh, swing arm there. And then we'll get our two six millimeter bolts. Pull up on the subframe and then get this bolt started into the transmission. Don't need to tighten it yet, but let's just get it started. Then there's the, it's a six millimeter head that goes through the foot plate there. And then the nut goes on the back side. And then also there's this eight millimeter head bolt that just gets put right there. And now that these two, these two six millimeter bolts and this eight millimeter bolt are started, we can go ahead and tighten them all up. And then if you remember from earlier, this plate here with little four millimeter Allen head covers up this eight millimeter bolt there. And that is where our body panel attaches to. Our wheel speed sensor is going to plug in right here. That'll get zip tied around there. And then this is our clutch slave cylinder bleed. We're just going to leave this loose to kind of remind us we're going to have to bleed this earlier. Or sorry, later. And then when this is all done, it'll get zip tied up there, kind of up and out of the way. But for now, we're just going to let it hang out. But now that we have our foot plates on, we can go ahead and return back up to these tighten up this eight millimeter head Allen and this nut right here. So now we are gonna go ahead and install our rear drive. So the rear drive is a very similar procedure to our swing arm. It uses the same size uh, bolt, or I guess bolts, plugs, whatever you wanna call them uses the same size 12 millimeter Allen and on the other side, it's a 12 millimeter Allen with a 30 millimeter lock nut. So, and also we're gonna put that same grease that we used on the clutch on these splines and on the ones in those. So that's already done, but uh, so what I do is I have the bolts into, into the rear drive so I can turn the rear drive like that. And I'm gonna align the rear drive into the drive shaft and then just turn it until those splines engage and then the whole rear drive unit will kind of just slide in as well also pay close attention to your bearing races make sure those are uh, still in your bearings and you can use a little bit of grease to kind of hold those in another thing i do is kind of put my hand and finger in this hole to kind of push up on the drive shaft and get that lined up just like that slipped right in I like to get all these started by hand. Don't grab a buddy before you grab an impact. So get that started by hand and then 
We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Uh, those are loosely installed. We're gonna kind of hold the rear drive up with one hand and then move this uh, rear beam that is attached to the transmission. I had to transfer this beam over from the old transmission and then put that through with the nut and washer on the backside. And then we'll tighten that all up. And then we can go ahead and throw our wheel speed sensor through the rear drive. So just pops right through there and then a T25 that holds that in. We can now go ahead and slide our exhaust on. So we're gonna slide the exhaust right over the head pipe there. And then on the muffler here, there's this little uh, bracket, which is gonna use a, I believe it's a T45. And that is gonna go right through there on the frame. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is with a loose clamp, slide this over here. You can put a little lubricant on there and then uh, once that's just lightly, uh, lightly on there, we'll go ahead and uh, get this bolt started just by hand and then tighten everything up. Get that started on there. And then in here, lift up on this and uh, get this started by hand. So now we will plug in our O2 sensor. So the O2 sensor is gonna get routed behind the throttle body. There's this little clip on the wire that's gonna clip onto a little fin on the motor under there. It'll be routed up behind the throttle body, kind of behind all this stuff here, behind your fuel pump, kind of up along this frame rail here, and it's gonna plug in right here. It's kind of a circular plug. So kind of route it up along that frame, as long as it's not rubbing on anything or touching on anything. And then um, this will just click together one way just like that. And then just get zip tied, just like that. We can now go ahead and reinstall our intake tube and air box lid along with an air filter. So slide our air intake tube into there and then it'll kind of drop down into the air box. Make sure it's engaged in this groove here. Then we got an air filter. Just like that, lays right down. Make sure these screws get lined up there. It'll snap right down into this place. And then just with a Phillips screwdriver. We can now reinstall our battery. And then uh, don't forget to plug your air intake temperature sensor in right there on the top of the air box. So this one has an aftermarket Shore Eye battery. So it has all these foam spacers. If you just have an OEM BMW battery, you're not gonna have all these. Then we can reinstall our seat bracket here. Thank you so much for watching. The next step we're going to do is synchronize the left and right throttle body. I will have that linked at the very end of this video. You can click on that and that'll show you how to do the throttle body synchronization. You're gonna to wanna to do that since we took the throttle bodies off. And then after you're done with that, we're gonna reinstall our left and right body panels, reinstall our chin spoiler, reinstall our bulbs into our mirrors, reinstall both of our mirrors, 
the uh, side panels there, as well as the front and rear seat. And then we'll have our bike totally together. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video helped you out in any way, please click the join button in the bottom right corner. It costs $4.99 a month and really helps me out a lot. Thank you very much. Have a safe ride.